All right, so let's get rocking and rolling. First of all, I wanted to thank all you guys for taking the time out to, to join us. And um, I think now more, more than ever is a perfect opportunity for us people that are in business and running things at a high level to collaborate and, and help each other out. I know uh, during normal circumstances, it would have probably been hard to get all of you guys on a call like this at one time. So it's kind of cool that we get to take advantage of this. Um, so I kind of, I sent out some questions, if you guys got them, just kind of the format so we can try to make this as productive as possible. And, um, you know, feel free to, to add anything uh, if you'd like, but I just want to start off kind of going around the, around the room real quick and just, uh, let's go with number one, just kind of introduce yourself, give us the, the 10 or 20 second spiel of who you are, what area you service, um, kind of what your role is and maybe some uh, kind of production, what you did in, the, in 2019. So we can kind of set the stage of kind of where everyone's at. So let's start off with, um, with Hilda. Tell us about you real quick, Hilda. Hi, everybody. Hilda Ramirez. Uh, I am the team leader at Keller Williams Silicon City. We, we have uh, an office in North San Jose and also a business center in the southern part of the county, kind of the tip of Evergreen. Um, and uh, I've been with the firm for two years. My job there is to motivate and coach uh, our greater <coughs> teams. We're very, very focused, or at least I'm very focused on profit first. And so I'm happy to report that for the second consecutive year, we've actually had the largest percentage of growth when it comes to profit share um, for a Keller Williams franchise. And uh, so we've been focused on cutting expenses now for the past two years. And boy, am I happy to be sitting where we're at right now. Um, so uh, really looking forward to talking uh, with all of you and uh, contributing to the conversation where I can. So um, really great to, to be uh, this, the token woman in this esteemed group of gentlemen. Thank you for that, Hilda. Um, I'm Joe Velasco. Uh, uh -huh. Let's see, 20, uh, 2019 did uh, sh shy of 100 million, ended up with 92 million. Um, I think it was 53 transactions. And a uh, team of, uh, got four you know, sales agents and two full-time assistants. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to keep it you know, lean and mean. I owned a you know, real estate company you know, in the past that I grew uh, to 13 locations and uh, you know, just I never wanted this, you know, this day to come, um, you know, where, you know, I'm thinking that I, you know, took the time to, you know, cut those costs and not have a huge, you know, monthly expense with, with all the locations that I had, you know, back then. Um, but, um, you know, what I'm, you know, I guess we'll kind of jump in after to kind of what, you know, what we're doing and I'll let you, you know, narrate that Enrique. But um, yeah, that's why I am. I'm over at Compass. Uh, just recently moved to Los Gatos, was in Palo Alto for uh, for a while in Los Altos, but um, we started condensing offices and uh, ended up in Los Gatos, and I love it. You know, it's been great. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. Um, Ivan, tell us about yourself. What's up, guys? Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Ivan Casares here, and I'm a real estate agent in San Diego. Uh, I run a team of four other individuals, other agents, got a full time admin. Uh, last year was our best year yet. We did uh, 52, I'm sorry, 52 million. Uh, we did 85 sides and uh, just looking to kind of expand and, and keep uh, trying to dominate. Our area really is North County. So it's really between Escondido to Carlsbad. Um, we do a little bit of downtown San Diego, but really we do cover mo mostly North County San Diego. So that's <coughs> us. And just looking to stay ahead and keep plugging away. Awesome. Awesome. Let's go with uh, Wilson. Wilson, what's up, brother? Tell me, tell us about you. Hey, guys, and lady. Good to see you guys here. Uh, <laughs> we're all from working from home, maybe from the office. Uh, our team is 13 people, five staff, eight agents, including myself. Last year, we helped 109 families for 104 million. The previous year was a little bit more. Uh, so. We're currently all working from home. We're still meeting every day, minus uh, Wednesdays for our huddle. So looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Awesome, thank you. Sorry about that. Did you say you were a lender or you're a realtor? Uh, I'm a real estate agent. Awesome, where realtor. I miss where you were from. Yeah, so San Mateo County, north of San Mateo County. So our <coughs> bread and butter is Daly City down to San Mateo. Cool, man, awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Kenny Fast. 
Hey, hi guys. Um, Kenny Trong, uh, go by Fast Asian over here in the Oakland market, uh, East Bay. Uh, have had a small team last year with about six people, two admin. We did about 56 million. Uh, but now we're at about 17 agents. Um, no clue what we're going to do this year. Uh, we moved over, we were at Client Real Estate for four years uh, prior to, I guess, some being shut down. And now we are at EXP Realty, been there for two months, and we love it. Awesome, awesome. Kevion. Yo, Speaking yo, what's up, guys? How's it going? <laughs> Kevin Strivance. Uh, I'm an agent here in Southern California. Um, I've been in real estate since early 2000s. I was with KW from 2011 until last year, and we launched our own company in case. Um, finished last year, 201 million. I have a team inside of my company. Um, so my personal volume of 10 million pending. So like 80 mil last year. Um, yeah, I, I work modern, mid-century modern is kind of my thing. Uh, heavy prospecting, you know, we don't spend a lot on marketing or things like that. We kind of launched um, just doing a lot of door knocking, a lot of calling, all the fun stuff. And um, yeah, man, just kind of grateful. It's weird uh, being, feeling more grateful right now, but I just feel like, you know, I'm sure some of you have asked yourself this question of like, how am I going to keep this way of being alive when things get back to normal? You know, how am I gonna spend this much time with my family? How am I going to spend this much time with God? Um, so it's interesting with so much negativity outside, but just feeling a lot, lot of love inside. So thankful to be here with you guys. You know, we're all going through this shit together. So let's figure it out. Right. The show. Good stuff. Yeah, great. Awesome. Jason Pugal. Speak to me, bro. How's it going, everybody? Uh, Jason Pugal here. I'm with Keller Williams in the Tri-Valley. So Office is in Pleasanton. Um, I actually live in Dublin. Grew up in Oakland, so my niche <laughs> is, you know, my, my, my natural market is at Oakland, Berkeley, Hayward, San Leandro, Alameda, but I've actually been working up that 580 towards the Tri-Valley, which is now, you know, Pleasanton, Dublin, San Ramon. Um, <clears throat> last year, 72 transactions, just a bit under 50 million in total volume. The cool thing about what we do is, uh, and, and, and I'm a team leader, I have uh, seven agents on the team and five back office staff of uh, two virtual assistants, a full-time ISA, a full-time listing coordinator, and then a full-time uh, assistant. Um, we're a pretty eclectic group, you know, we, we do a lot of phone calling, so, cold calling, so, you know, we, we sell everything from commercial apartments, that's actually where I got started apartment buildings to, you know, flip opportunities to move ups, uh, as well as business opportunities. But Enrique, thank you so much, man. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be even asked to be a part of this, you know, monster group. Um, you know, Joe, I see a lot out there. Kenny, you and I went to high school together. So, so we know each other pretty well. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, Enrique, for this. Yeah. For sure, man. Right on. Uh, Rusty, <laughs> talk to me, bro. All right, guys, how's everybody doing? Can you hear me? Yep. Right on. Yep. So um, I'm Rusty Pop. I'm in uh, the Intero office in San Jose. Uh, we're in the Willow Glen part. Um, and uh, let's see, last year I did 40 transactions, um, right around 40 million, about a million dollars per transaction. Um, I have a team currently of four agents, all of whom are, uh, three out of four are with less than one year in the business. Um, and then I have one agent who has two years. Um, so I'm really, really focused on trying to help some newer agents uh, sort of learn the business and, and build something for themselves. So that's kind of my business model is to really kind of give what I know away to the next guy. And that way I get to keep what I have. So um, that's my business model. Um, focusing on San Jose, South Bay area. Um, I have a farm in the Blossom Valley area, which has been really good to me. So that's kind of my business in a nutshell. Awesome. Awesome. What kind of farm are Brett? you talking about there? <laughs> Brett, Brett, give me something, bro. 
Cool, cool. Yeah, so um, Brett Jennings here in Silicon Valley. I'm actually in the same market as Rusty and uh, Enrique. And my business model sounds like it's it's similar to Kevin Stridevant there in SoCal um, in that I run a brokerage and a team, uh, but the mindset is similar to Rusty is like, I'm doing it because I want to give back. I had, as I've grown a team, we did in my team last year, at six agents, we did 144 transactions for 162 million. Um, I just was finding those really talented guys and gals want to continue to grow. And if I didn't have a path for them, they, they would leave my world. So we launched a brokerage uh, hybrid model kind of crossover between a team and a brokerage uh, for the agents that are on that independent side. It's way more support than they find at a traditional brokerage and higher splits than they get in a team. So that's the model that we're running. But um, yeah, I mean, I, it's just interesting navigating this new environment. Uh, as far as our cadence of accountability, we, we've shifted everything over to Zoom with you know buyer and seller presentations. We put three into escrow last week. Things are still moving. I'm surprised uh, to see and, and happy about. Um, still trying to get the, um, the cadence right from working from home. Uh, I'm right now working from the dining table and my wife's like, hey, we need to go put that office, I mean, that office together in the spare bedroom. Because uh, she doesn't like me being out here on conference calls all day. <laughs> yeah. So, but it is it is great to spend more time with family. Um, what were what were anything else that? Uh, yeah, one we'll of the things on that we're doing. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, we'll move on in a second to the next questions. Um, uh, appreciate that, Brett. Uh, Jason Palomino, that's my business partner. I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself and and what we what we do. Yeah, so, so my name is Jason Palomino. I've uh, been in the business for over 15 years. Uh, Enrique and I have been partners for probably over 12 years now. Um, and so I specialize more on the mortgage side. So I'm working with a lot of the buyers, coaching our team of agents uh, with, with the buyer side of the business. Our office is here in San Jose. We did, we've done over uh, 50 million last year in volume. Um, and so Right now we're yeah working from home. I actually came to the office. There's no one here right now because my house I have two little ones, so it's tough to kind of really focus and and kind of eliminate all the noise and all all the kids running around and wanting to wanting to eat all the time. So we um, so I'm out here in the office right now, and uh, yeah, just just excited to be here and see what see what we all put together. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let's talk a little bit about kind of daily cadence right now. So for those of you guys that, that haven't chimed in on that, what are you doing on the daily? Are you guys still prospecting? How are you holding your team accountable? And really kind of what's the message that you're giving to your team right now? How are you showing up as a leader? Uh, whoever wants to chime in on that. Hey, let me chime in real quick because I have some madness going on at my uh, daycare center. Um, <laughs> that I need to go attend to. So we're doing a call. I'm doing a call with my immediate group, not my whole company every single morning at 8.30. We've always, we did, always did in-person meetings and we're still prospecting heavy. So as my, my group of five that I have prospecting every day, um, we're averaging like 20 contacts a day. We're doing a lot of just this just sold. I'm just advising my team to not talk about real estate. Here's the basic script. Um, hey, you, you know, just let's role play real quick, Enrique. For sure. Ring, right, so, ring, hello. Hey, Enrique, it's Kevin Sturdivant. How are you? Good, good. How's it going? Good, man. Hey, listen, I know there's a lot of madness going on, a lot of craziness. I run a small local business here, and uh, I'm actually a neighbor of yours. And man, I really just wanted to reach out, bro, and, and touch base, see if you guys need anything at all, see if you have any neighbors in need, and um, just see if I could do anything to help whatsoever. Yeah, what what kind of business is it that you do? Oh, we're we're a real estate office. Yeah, we're here. Oh. We're right off of Newport Boulevard. But yeah, how are okay. you guys doing, man? We're just man, like kind of like everyone trying to figure this thing out. Don't really know what's what's going on. We're my wife and I are working from home and trying to manage the kids. Crazy. How old are your kids? Uh, six and three. Woo! Wild, wild. Yeah, we have one, eight, eleven, and nineteen. So, oh, man, you got your hands more crazy. full than me then. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, listen, um, I spent my last commission on a, on a high-powered drone, and I have tested it. It does carry up to three rolls of toilet paper. So um, <laughs> if you need anything, man, I'm, I'm right around the way, bro. You need anything at all. Yeah, no, definitely. I'll keep that in mind. I'm, 
I mean, how, what's going on in the real estate market anyways, you know? You know it's been interesting, right? So there, I call it the pause versus the positive. I put a lot of stuff on social if you want to check me out on my Instagram, but I just put something out called the pause versus the positive. And for Costa Mesa and Newport Beach, uh, last week, 44 properties went uh, into a pause status, right? However, 36 properties actually went pending, 31 properties went active, and 31 properties went uh, and closed escrow. So we had close to 100 on the positive side and 44 that paused. Um, and so, you know, I know there's a lot of talk out there that nothing is happening. The reality is uh, there's still an abundance of things moving. As agents, we just have to, um, you know, navigate a bit differently to, to be of service for our clients. So what, well, what I appreciate that update. Yeah. What kind of business are you in? I'm in, uh, I'm in tech, but you know what we were before all this happened, we were talking about a move, you know, I can ki definitely keep you in mind and follow up with you once all this settles down. Well, here's one thing for sure. I am not a, a, a hard guy to get a hold of and it's a guarantee that I will answer your call right now. So <laughs> Uh, but that's kind of been my basic script, guys, is I'm not, I just feel weird calling expireds and, and having, this has actually always been our thing, though. We've always called from a place of how can I help? How can I serve? But now more than ever, I'm telling my team, don't even bring up real estate right now. Work on building your database right now. So we all have different farms that we work. Clean up your database. Call and connect with people. If they bring up real estate, cool but just use this as a time to call and connect. So it's been interesting and it's been cool. We've, we've actually been having some insane conversations. Like I will absolutely say of the 500 or so voice to voice contacts we made last week, 90% positive and, and a lot of leads, a lot of leads. We actually got four new listings this week. Um, oh, but yeah. It's yeah, we're putting one on the market in an hour here. Beautiful. Um, for two, yeah, 2.4. We'll see what happens. We opened two escrows <laughs> this week. But it's just the energy really is shifting in my team right now in like, hey, this ain't about commission right now. You got to shift your mindset to, to deep, deep, sincere compassion. And just reach out and connect. Reach out to your past clients. So, you know. That's pretty much what we're doing, but give me, give me a sec, guys. I will, I will be back ASAP. Appreciate that. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. I'll, I'll go ahead and jump in if that's cool. I just want to also let you guys know I got a one o'clock, uh, we got a big com uh, compass, uh, Northern California, um, call here on, on zoom at one, but I'm definitely, you know, good through one o'clock. A couple of things that, you know, that, that I'm doing just a little bit, you know, different, um, well, a lot different, but, um, you know, my, my team, we were meeting every, every two weeks. Um, now, you know, what we're doing is we're basically just meeting, you know, weekly, um, just to, you know, stay in touch. But same thing as, um, I just forgot the gentleman that's, that just took off right now, but just talking, what was his name? Enrique? Kevin. Kevin. Uh, you know, just making, you know, connecting with our sphere and, you know, and showing compassion, you know, and I think anytime that we make any calls to our, you know, you know, previous clientele or current clientele, I mean, they know we're, real, we're realtors and they're going to naturally, you know, ask the question, what we're, practicing really is our dialogue on, on, you know, spreading positivity. Cause there's a lot of things that, you know, we can't control, right. But we're focusing on, on what we can. Um, and, and we're making it a point to every day come up with, you know, three positive things that we can, you know, share. And one of those things that I want to share with you guys, you know, right now is, uh, is this, you know, that, you know, came from, um, every, every morning we get an email from Leonard Steinberg, you know, through compass and, he just puts out there a lot of really good information, you know, market stats, um, things that are happening across, you know, the, the, the world and also things, um, you know, related to what's happening right now, right, with, with the coronavirus. Uh, but one thing he put out there, and I shared this with my group, and I think you guys will enjoy this, is he put, uh, did you know your brand never sleeps? When you're on a video conference call, people can see you. They can see the room you're in. Be brand aware at all times and always mute your side when not speaking. Background noise can be noisy. Do you guys like my uh, branding? <laughs> Anybody notice? <laughs> right. So, um, you're, you know, anytime we're, we're speaking right now, I know that, like I shared with you guys earlier, you know, day two for me felt like day 30th. And 
I'm so used to getting up every morning at 5.30 and then, you know, hitting the office, being at the office there till, mm -hmm. you know, six o'clock and then, you know, coming home. So kind of adjusting here at home, you know, was what I put out to my team to find a place, an area. And I know Brett brought that up a little bit earlier. Find an area that you're, you know, that you, that, where you can focus because our work, you know, handling people's, you know, biggest investments of their life is, is extremely important, right? So I want to make sure that they know that I'm focused when we're having these Zoom calls and I want to keep it personal. I want to know that, you know, that, um, you know, I respect their time and, and being able to talk to them, it feels face to face, you know, it, it's cool, right? But, you know, being around where there's noise in the background, you know, and I know all of us, you know, that are in this group, fortunately, you know, are financially doing, you know, pretty well. So find an area, and that's what I, you know, let my team, find an area in your house that you feel that you can focus uh, and, you know, and be productive. You know, when I was talking to my team, you know, day one, day two, day three, you know, I was, I was literally in my bed and, and, I, and I was positioned like this. I'm like, what a turn off is that, right? And I know that we can change the background, but, you know, I was, I was comfortable there and then put the San Francisco Golden Gate background on, you know, my Zoom call. But after I, you know, was just, you know, thinking about it, I mean, I'm so big on, on image, you know, the way my, you know, video tour show, the way my picture show, uh, you know, I want everything in the highest, you know, definition, you know, possible that exists. And I want everything looking good. So I want to continue that brand, you know, that image, because that's a representation of me. And I also want to feel comfortable, you know, feel comfortable and positive in the area that I'm working in. And we did that, you know, in our home, you know, I have a, a four bedroom home with an, with an office and I have a nine year old and my nine year old, I feel has, you know, needs, you know, the most, the most quietest area where she's completely distracted. And, and that office is set up by some of you guys that are my friends on Facebook, you can kind of see, you know, what I posted earlier. So my nine year old goes into that office and I put a sign there. It says, you know, Oakwood, you know, Oak, you know, Oakwood school. And she's in class and I see the teachers teaching. And then I set another area up in our family room, which is, uh, you know, I can kind of zoom and show you guys. It's kind of across my, it's over there, right? But um, that's where my four-year-old is. And my four-year-old is there because she has to be there with, with my wife because she's working on an iPad and, she, you know, she gets logged out and my wife has to jump back in. And then she has an area, you know, my wife, I told her to take the breakfast note that's kind of private, but she needs to be watching, you know, our four-year-old. And, um, and so they're over there. I'm in the master bedroom. It's my backyard there in the back. And, and it's, you know, a little bit of also distraction when I get, you know, a, a buyer or seller, whoever I'm talking to online, and they go, oh, you know, you got a pretty nice backyard, you know, life's not bad. And we just, you know, start talking and I have them kind of, you know, show me around, you know, their home. Uh, but last week, you know, we had, we had a, you know, excellent week. We put three buyers in contract, uh, you know, all price ranges from one eight and a half, uh, from 1.8 to two and a half. Um, we took an active listing pending first weekend out without having an open house, you know, during the shutdown. And I listed uh, two homes. I'm going to put a lot on the market in uh, Los Gatos here also in about an hour as soon as I get off the next call. So we're just doing everything to stay positive and, and, and you know, positive momentum, you know, moving forward because uh, another thing, and I'm talking a lot, but I'll, I'll promise I got about two minutes left is what we're doing in our household and, and our family is uh, we're not, we're not watching the news till eight o'clock, you know, because if you guys notice, it's all the same news all damn day, all damn day. We're just feeding on to find out what's the new count, you know, and which is negative, right? X amount of people died in Italy or, whatever it is, right? So we're, we're just not watching it. We're not watching the news till eight o'clock. I'm not, I don't want to be ignorant, not stay informed, but it's just, I, I just don't want to hear it. And I also don't told my agents, please do not text me and let me know what's out there and what's happening, you know, unless it's after eight o'clock. If you want to tell me something negative, make it after eight, because that's the way I see it. I just want to know like, you know, how we found a cure, you know, what, you know, the people that have survived, you can let me know that, you know, 103 year old, you know, you know, got the coronavirus and, and beat it that makes my day right because you know the negative stuff it just kind of wears down and i just want to focus on 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 being positive right and and i've shared the same thing with my you know extended family my mom and dad and and everybody else that knows me i, I really don't want to hear it and i try not to you know look at social media and if i see something on there i just quickly kind of move on just because they're being overly flooded with you know negative information so what we're doing is just keeping it positive you know every which way um, you know, and really where that came from was, you know, day two of, you know, my four-year-old and my four-year-old was playing with two dolls and, um, you know, she had, she was yelling at one because, you know, she didn't wash her hands to come back in and play and don't you know that she could, you know, you could die, you know, from the coronavirus and it kind of made me sick because I was thinking, man, I, you know, how would I have felt, you know, if I was, you know, four years old and my parents are watching the news all damn day about, you know, people dying, you know, it's, it has to be a mental thing, right? So I'd invite you guys all to do, you know, to do the same my two cents.
Awesome, Joe. I appreciate that, man. Definitely controlling that mindset, I think, is, is key right now. Um, I want to switch up the topic, because just for the sake of time, um, let's talk about expenses, you know, because that's one of the things I know Hilda was talking about, cutting expenses. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious for all you guys, um, what are you cutting out? What are you doubling down on? I know Brett's heavy on Zillow, so are you keeping that spend up there still? What, uh, maybe Brett, shed some light on that. Yeah, no, we were, we were, that was the first lever we were going to, going to cut. Um, I'm on the Zillow advisory board and uh, last, um, I guess it was a week ago, Monday that we all got together and they, they proposed some kind of uh, some, some soft relief. And we're like, Hey guys, like you guys don't understand what this means. Like this is significant. So they came back the next day and they're like, Hey, we'll, we'll cut your, 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 your bill 50% or we'll give you 50% credit um, on your, ad, on your ad spend. So they did that across the board for all agents. And um, that was helpful because, yeah, we're, we're at about 25000 a month spend on Zillow. Um, but then we, we do have some lender copay on it. So it really, boom, that significantly cut down a lot of expenses. We're also, you know, my, my wife does our books. We're, we're just looking at where else. So we're doing an inventory of all of our expenses. It's a great time, right, to, to clean up um, a lot of those things that end up as credit card charges that you – <laughs> somehow either needed or signed up for and it was a free trial and then all of a sudden that thing's digging on your so last time we did that we saved about five grand um when we really got got clear on eliminating a lot of stuff actually that was five grand over 90 it was like 1700 a month um on just a bunch of those little things that we don't need like and so we're we're, we're going through that process again of triaging our uh credit card statement of looking at like hey what do we really need the other thing that we're considering is you know, Gary Keller's prescription in the book Shift, um, one of his first things is like, go deep on the lead generation sources that you know work, right? Focus on, on your core two or three. Obviously, those things that are lower cost and higher um, revenue. I mean, nothing beats what Kevin talked about on the prospecting. And I've got a couple good nuggets from his thing um, with respect to that. But the other thing on cutting expenses uh, is whatever you can shift from a fixed expense to an incremental expense is what you want to do when a market shifts. So um, we're, we have a full-time, we have two full-time salary people on the transaction team. Uh, one's the team lead and then she's got an assistant. And we, um, through the business structure we're in, we're probably going to move her to the brokerage, the, 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 the company that we, we partner with. She's going to go to work for them because they can afford to carry her on the P&L and then we'll pay her on a ter per transaction basis. So, or just looking at where we can kind of tighten up and get lean and mean, you know, it's, and I got to be more mindful of it right now because I went from being a team to launching a brokerage. And so my fixed expense went up last year. Um, but I mean, it's like, man, we just coming off our best month. Like we just started to ramp. We had our best month ever, put 40 deals and 40 million into escrow in a month. And then bam, this thing hits. So it's, it's gonna, it's, um, you know, it's just an opportunity to, to, to do that. But I think going deep on the lead generation that's cost effective, and then cutting expenses, um, you know, is, is, is the two levers that we're going to play with first. Awesome. Awesome. Appreciate that. Anybody else want to chime in on expenses or anything that maybe Brett didn't touch on? Um, yeah, I could jump, jump in it too. I mean, I, you know, I have two full-time assistants and it's definitely, you know, it's, I told myself when this was, when this was happening, I was going to kind of take it day by day, but as we've been seeing, you know, day by day, things have been changing, you know, dramatically. So, uh, you know, one thing that, you know, uh, that Compass did, and you guys probably already, you know, know about it is, uh, you know, I was uh, there, and I'm sure it's going to be on the call that I'm going to have here at one o'clock, but uh, when I was working over for the agency, um, some of the folks from the agency, you know, went to Compass, you know, Southern Cal, they're big in Southern California, the agency for those that may or may not know. Um, so I have some friends that, you know, called me up and said, hey, um, you know, Robert Repkin's going to be on a call for uh, Southern California, um, and it's a, you know, Southern California you know, 1,000 agents plus are going to be on. Here's the Zoom, you know, link, you know, get on, right? I'm like, okay, cool. So, you know, I jump, jumped on it and, you know, it was Monday, right? Monday at 10 o'clock. And, um, you know, just just hearing, you know, when you hear leaders as, you know, as ourselves speak and, you know, with, with you know, what you guys are thinking and um, and what we need to do when, you know, when when things happen, right? And, and we need to adjust. So, uh, you know, Robert talked about, uh, you know, one of the toughest days that, that he's had, you know, today, you know, with Compass and that was Monday laying off you know, 15% of the workforce, you know, and, um, you know, I can tell you being at, you know, Compass that, you know, we had, we had, 
you know, a lot, a lot of administrative staff, which, you know, I thought was, you know, amazing because just the support and I'm not, this is not a recruiting, you know, uh, message I'm putting out there by any means, but we had just tons and tons of support and being a, you know, brokerage owner myself in the past, you know, I know, and I can appreciate what, you know, what expenses are. And, and, you know, he quoted, and I can't remember exactly the quote when he quoted Warren Buffett, but, you know, it's like, we, you know, we're forced sometimes to make, you know, decisions that, that we don't want to do, but sometimes we make them too late. You know, it's like, don't be afraid to make them early because it's for the vitality of, of the company. You know, it's not that any of them did anything wrong. It's like, you need to survive, right? So if, you know, cutting some of those, those expenses is going to keep your business, you know, and your brand afloat, well, you have to do what you have to do. And, you know, he reached out to the, everyone and he let them know that, you know, he wished them well. And it was, again, nothing, you know, nothing that they did. So, you know, you know, what I'm doing, very similar to what Brett, you know, Brett did, uh, you know, what my wife and I, you know, also went through some of our credit cards. We haven't gone, you know, through all of them, but some of the stuff that we're getting $20 memberships consistently. And I think we came up right now with about $320 of stuff that we're not even using anymore, like Adobe. And like, I don't even know, I was paying that $20 every month or uh, it's definitely like reading, but I like getting books that come in. And I know we had Audible that on both of our accounts and <laughs> we're not even using them. So just a bunch of small things like that. I think with my uh, admins, I'm more than likely going to go transaction based. Um, and I think that's, that's what I'm going to do. I don't do, uh, you know, as many transactions I would like. I think now it's about, you know, between 45 and, and 50. They're a little bit bigger dollar points, but, you know, transaction base is the route that I'm going to go or probably just bring in an admin between 25 and 30 hours a week because really don't need any more of that. And if things change, I'll be more than happy to pick up another admin. But um, again, I'm going to keep them on for the next 60 days and I'll take day by day. Um, and that's kind of how I'm looking, looking at things for now. Um, I cut my farm in terms of sending out twice a month. I'm probably just going to be sending out once every 21 days and, uh, and also taking out an area that we're really wasn't producing for mail. Got it. Um, awesome. Oh, go ahead, Hilda. To share a little bit. Um, um, so so um, we or spent the first few days um, of the shutdown um, just completely shifting our business so that we could operate 100% uh, online, uh, which has just kicked us off this week to a roaring start. It was the best thing that we could have done. Just sit down or how long it's going to affect uh, California on the short term and, and uh, respect to the actual lockdown and realize that this is our new reality. And there, we are in a recession. Uh, it's going to take a while for us to come out of this. And so we're being pretty honest and pretty factual with our team and letting them know that um, you know our paradigm has shifted. and uh, I know there's uh, some folks on this call uh, that have a background with Keller Williams so you're familiar with the shift so we already have uh, everybody in our office either in a boot camp attending Ignite we have them uh, in a uh, pivot mode uh, attending uh, shift book clubs all over the internet including in our market center so the education is focused on how to work with our new reality in terms of cutting expenses gary's had his top 100 uh reading a book called the uh, profit first so he has all of his uh, members in coaching and um also gary his top 100 producing agents nationwide reading the book um, profit first it's by mike um, Kalowitz, I believe, and I'll be happy to uh, email the, that information to the group later. Uh, what was it called? I've always come what from. A, that, what did you say was called that book? I missed it. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Profit First, and uh -huh. it's by Michael. Uh, um and you can Google it. It's a great, great book. And for myself personally, as a manager and a coach to our agents, I've always come from a point of uh, perspective of building wealth. I think building wealth in real estate is one of the biggest takeaways. Uh, we don't get rich by earning fees. We get wealthy by building wealth. And so um, the tendency that we have as consumers, whether we're in real estate or any other field, is that we want some form of gratification for our work. 
So I was very, very fortunate at a young age, um, my early 20s, my stockbroker told me this. He says, Hilda, what do you do for recreation? I said, well, I love to travel. I love to go anywhere where I can decompress. So I like to go to the beach, like to go to the movies, just like to go where I can lock down for a little bit of quiet time. Uh, he says, are you a big spender? I said, no, nah, only in shoes and handbags, but I think that's a girl problem across the uh, the world. And uh, I, he says, well, what if I could show you a way where you could buy more of those handbags and you could travel more frequently? I said, I'm all ears. So uh, he said, the next time you go to the mall and you want to buy something spontaneously, he says, I want you to pull out your checkbook and write me a check. Send me the cost of that item. If you're going to buy a handbag, send me the, send me the check. And he says, I think you will develop a different habit. And, I, and it was the best advice I've ever had in my life. So I give that advice out freely to anybody who's interested. Um, sometimes it's just our human nature to want some form of gratification. So I started sending, you know, adding checks and deposits to my brokerage account, felt the same way. I was basically spending and rewarding myself. But over the years, those assets appreciated and they didn't appreciate like all of the other personal items that I would have purchased. And soon enough, you have enough money to um, invest in other real estate and now you have all the passive income that you need to buy all the other you know, toys. Um, so we're focused on teaching people how to continuously focus on their um, wealth building. We know that we may be going into a buying cycle that's going to allow us to purchase some of the properties that we may have wanted to purchase in the last few years and didn't. Um, so we're going to take advantage of all those opportunities. And we do have to be hypersensitive with the community because we know that Unfortunately, in these situations, people will lose their jobs and they may have financial difficulties. Um, but also my background is over 30 years in 1031 tax deferred exchanges and investors think very differently than consumers who are buying a primary residence. So I wanna urge everybody, if you're out there, um, get into low cost prospecting. That means picking up the phone, um, you know, contact investors and they're going to ha you're going to have a completely different conversation with those individuals because they're going to be much more um, direct and to the point and you can say if you find yourself in a position where you need to make a move uh, please contact me or let me know what your magic number is and i will make sure that i um, keep reporting to you on a weekly semi uh, monthly or monthly basis whatever you know establish that rapport with them right away and um, we're going to get through this uh, this is uh, one of many economic shifts um, we know what it was like in 2008. I don't think we're going to get there. The, the economy was very strong before we entered this. Um, but there will be an immediate, uh, immediate impact that we'll all feel and sense, and we're going to work through it. Uh, but keeping your expenses low um, is very, very important. I mean, I'd rather even change the flavor of the coffee or the brand of the coffee and get rid of the lattes than I would get rid of talent. For me, uh, it takes a long time to hire and um, train people. Uh, so, and, and we want to be able to keep our very, very uh, high and top talent. That's, that's critical. Thank you, Hilda. Hilda, that, that's a good point that you mentioned there, right? Because a lot of times when we're thinking of cutting expenses, sometimes we look towards cutting people. But if, if they're doing a great job, right, you may have to buckle down with your team and say, hey, we're going to cut out all the extracurricular stuff that we're doing so that we can keep these people on the team or whatever it may be. So I think that's a good point. Um, I've never looked at it that way, right? Yeah. It'll cost you a lot more to train new people than it will be to eliminate a happy hours. I'll tell you that right now. Um, take a look at every expense um, in the in the office. Uh, you know, if you have to renegotiate uh, your lease, you need to renegotiate, um, you know, office equipment, whatever you have to do, buckle down on expenses, but do everything humanly possible to keep your great talent. Uh, because especially here in Silicon Valley, the only people that haven't been working in the last few years are those people who really don't want to work. When your unemployment is under, you know, 3%, uh, and uh, let's face it, all the other companies are going to cut the people who might have been just a little bit uh, either top heavy or uh, not pulling their full weight. Um, so if the unemployment sector goes up, 
um, you know, you have to think that all the great companies are keeping their top talent. So let's try our best to do the same. And that way we can deliver higher services. And when we, you know, uh, enter or start resuming business as normal, chances are a lot of the individuals who've been in this business uh, on a short run and never learned how to prospect, have never learned how to take listings and, and really focus on market share are going to find themselves perhaps leaving the business. And so you're going to find that uh, the top performing agents who've got excellent skills are going to do the vast majority of the business and you're going to need these support people to help you. Excellent point there. So while you're talking about that, you know, with people leaving the business and stuff, I think there's an opportunity here for people building a team to be able to recruit during this time, right? As, as people start kind of scattering and figuring out what they're going to do for those of you that are recruiting right now, maybe give us some insight, you know, as to maybe how you might use this as an opportunity or what you're doing right now. Absolutely. So uh, the same way that you're having these warm touches with your prospects and your clients, you should be reaching out to other real estate professionals that you either admire, um, you know, uh, you know, really love the job that they're doing. What I really like about everybody on this call, to be honest, you are in a different age, um, or I can say age gap, or uh, you know what I'm referring to. There are a lot of agents who perhaps will be in the latter part of their life and may consider this as an opportunity to, you know, retire, leave the business. But that doesn't mean that they can't partner with um, an emerging business who uh, has perhaps a um, younger, uh, you know, uh, population that wants to do that golden handshake and give them a few more years of referral business and, um, and serve as mentors. I mean, there's such a tremendous, tremendous opportunity right now. It's not even funny. I, I, I'm looking at it and, and the world is going to be our oyster. It just depends on how realistic we get with what's happening and how proactive we get with our activities and our actions. So um, get out there, make the phone calls, make the touches. Um, people are looking for strong leadership right now. They're looking for people who are confident and, and taking the brisk, fast decisions because in these shifts, the people who move the fastest win, no question. And that's across the board in prospecting um, and recruiting alike. Um, so if you've got a good model, you've got a good reputation. And number one, uh, right now, the most important thing is your brand and your reputation of uh, primarily um, those two things because that's what we're all going to lean on moving forward and if we want somebody to step into our business and grow with us um, they're going to be attracted to your trustworthiness and your credibility first and then your systems and models and training and how uh, well or and how uh, willing you are to pour into them um, I really like that uh, uh, Mr. Papp said there that he wants to pour into these four new agents of his. He'll gain a lot of credibility and a lot of respect for that. So, you know, we should all step up and do the same. Well, I'll, I'll right take on. a question. Um, so how the recruit, so, so like, I, well, I just got back from Hawaii from a week. So I literally started work um, Monday, uh, was it Tuesday, yesterday? So I, I on the airplane ride, yeah. I worked on my newsletter, which I, I used to do my newsletter every single week for five years straight. And then last year I gave up because it wasn't a big part of my business. Uh, but I, I spent a good five, six hours on that. I sent it out and about 3,000 agents has it. And they were, a lot of them were posting because I had the stuff on what to do in this crisis. You know, like call your lenders, call your credit card and different sites you can go to. And then just uh, re like today, I probably talked to about 100. I looked, I just looked, I probably talked to about 130 people since last night on Instagram. because That's where I get most of my business from and most of my recruiting efforts. Um, so I've been actively on social, on Facebook. I've gathered all the training uh, sessions I can find on uh, Facebook and Zoom calls and such. And I posted them on our team Slack channel. We've always had this training in Slack channel, but now actually for the first time uh, ever, I've opened it up to uh, guests. So you send guests, uh, random people to your channel, there's no cost to you. So I've invited about 30 people to our training channel now, because I want to, for me to be able to recruit on becomes consistently a thought leader um, and share information like that. So after this whole crisis is open, you know, I'm currently always encouraging people to rather than sit home all day, watch TV, you can watch TV at night, you know, just make, make TikTok videos or whatnot, you know, focus on sharpening your ax, join as many of these webinars as possible, gather information. So when you come out of this, you know, this three months period when the market gets good again, you know, you're a much, much stronger agent than 
um, all your competitors because a lot of people aren't doing this type of stuff. And then for me, if I'm the, if I can make myself the resource uh, where everyone is, you know, a lot of people are sharing my content right now and going to my page, or I'm able to build up that brand and exposure, then I'll be able to um, recruit pretty easily after this whole thing. Because if you guys know some of my background, I've actually recruited a little over 80 agents uh, to climb real estate in the last five years. <clears throat> so after this, it's going to be easier because people have nothing better to do than watch, uh, watch all of our content right now. Beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, be the dig digital mayor, right, of your, of your yeah. area. And, and Kenny, I know you're, you're big on systems, bro. So what um, kind of the piggyback off that? What sort of systems are you putting into place right now to help service your clients, help navigate around kind of the whole, uh, you know, uh, shutdown, not being able to do open houses and stuff like that? I'm not, not texting like those articles. I've been sending out the articles individually to my clients. Um, you know, we were, we were able to, we're still, I mean, the market is honestly secretly pretty active. We put three buyers on contract in the last um, three days. There's still multiple offers going on. I'm telling clients, you know, don't worry about this right now. We haven't felt quite the, um, quite the effects of it yet. Um, and then for my team, this morning inter interview with Sisu uh, HQ to get like a CTE, you know, tracking for my team. Um, I spent like half an hour and out on in the EXP world touring a private suite that Daniel Beer had, and he invited me to his team meeting. Um, and then I spent an hour today. Uh, interviewing what YouTube agents to, to set up my live YouTube channel where we'll have a hundred videos coming out this year. So I'm really, really spending this time, this downtime, um, working on systems that I, I've had interest in, but now I can actually have time to sit down and really execute a lot of this stuff. Um, so we're going to come out of this with a lot more systems on a much bigger team, I think by the end of the year, because we're, my focus is that during this time. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Wilson, let's hear from you, brother. Share some, uh, shed some light kind of on, I know you guys were doing a lot of door knocking, right? In your farm. Are you switching just to strictly calls or, you know, maybe shed some light on kind of what the team dynamic is like right now and what's your focus? Yep. Uh, over 50% of our business comes from open houses and canvassing. So we clearly can't do that right now, which is fine. I think it's an even playing field for everyone out there. So um, what we're doing now, our standards have changed a little bit. It used to be meet every day at 8.30, very similar to Kevin, minus Wednesdays. Wednesdays are our break days. We do our huddles, our gratitude, we practice, and we make calls together. So right now we're still doing 20 contacts a day. And in the past, we also had an eight-hour lead gen for per week, which included open houses if they did do it, or canvassing or door knocking. And we tracked it by using an app called Map My Walk. So we can't do that right now. So what we're really doing now is just maintaining our contacts with our clientele in the database. Um, some, some things I can add to is I coach uh, with Ben Kenny, and he just gives a lot of insight on what he's doing and what he's seeing out there. So um, there's... There's definitely a lot of renegotiation of leases out there. So it, with, you know, market centers, you give them ultimatums on, you know, you're going to file bankruptcy if you, if you're not going to be able to reduce the rates on my rent. He's just giving some of the tools of his trade of what he's, um, uh, he's seen out there. And that way, you know, people want to work with you regarding that. They, they still want, they don't, they rather have some rent than no rent. Right. Um, and of course, uh, looking at expenses and they have a weekly and a daily uh, call about what are, what are we going to cut, how we're going to increase revenue. And basically the summary of that is just making sure you have cash because as, as people go bankrupt, as people run out of business, who's going to take the market share? It's the person that has the cash available, however long this is and just prepare for the long term. Ivan had a question. Thanks for sharing that, uh, Wilson. Ivan had a question. He's saying, you know, for those that are heavy in prospecting, how are you encouraging your team right now to buckle down and pick up the phone and start making calls, right? Like, or, you know, how are you making this a little better? Because it's, I mean, like, I know we had our team meeting today, this morning, and it's like trying to tell the team, like, dude, we got, we got, a, are we going to do this together? Are we going to jump on a Zoom call and prospect together? Or, you know, give me some ideas around that. Maybe let's hear from, uh, from Rusty or, or uh, Jason uh, Pugal. 
Yeah. So for me, it's, it's, it's really, and, and my business model has always been pretty ground grassroots. It's been very foundational, uh, just very, uh, organic, um, you know, as far as reaching out to clients, I think that's something that, you know, has, has been habitual for us, but as it relates to today's market, we've been, you know, a little bit more keen on talking to people who are, you know, who aren't necessarily trolling, you know, folks who are actually active and ready to dive into the market. Um, we've been very keen on uh, spending time with the right people. Let me kind of just rewind a little bit to a past question that you had about expenses. I've, I've been very, um, so my wife is a treasury analyst for a major corporation uh, that's situated here in the Bay Area. So she's really gained me up on like expenses, how to put money in, in certain places. Um, every month my CPA sends me a P&L and every year, you know, I always cut costs. I, this time I haven't even had to, you know, hit that panic button or anything because I've always, you know, forecasted you know, what worked, what didn't work, what to double down on and what not to. Um, I'm just gonna share something with you guys uh, that's pretty valuable to me. Um, let me just share my screen real quick. Can you guys see that? Yep. All right, cool. So this is my organizational chart for my team. Uh, it's pretty straightforward now. This is kind of a two-ended kind of comment here. So. This is the team. My cost is most, the, the only person that's on salary is going to be Dina Kennedy here, who is my executive assistant. She's the only one on salary. Everybody else is on a per transaction base. Um, furthermore, as I built the team, I never really recruited. Everything was always organic. As a business owner, I've always looked at kind of what did I need, you know, to be able to service our clients better. So what I did was I actually brought on, you know, different people who had different, you know, who, 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 who had different um, skill sets. For instance, someone here who's been in construction for a very long time. Uh, Eddie Rios, my operations manager, has been in class A from class D to class A property management. So of myself, um, Ricky Chan, you know, a close friend of mine has a lot of uh, a lot of cash buyers that he works with, a lot of overseas, uh, a lot of the Chinese market. Yun Tong is a probate specialist. Her husband's one of the top East Bay probate attorneys. You know, um, Max Manette, Manette, he doesn't like to get out in the business, but he, he's really good on the phone. He's actually the full-time ISA. And whenever he brings a transaction in, he's, uh, you, you know, he gets a piece of it. So, and, and of course, Miranda Sang got a real keen eye for design. She's, she's actually got a design, uh, um, a, uh, she, she, she was an undergrad, excuse me, she was a, she's got a minor in design, you know, so it was very methodical about how we put the team together. So kind of going back to this, never really needed to cut cost at all. Um, the, the marketing, excuse me, the, the, the transaction coordinators, you know, they're all third party TCs. Uh, so they get paid per transactions. I have a, uh, I have a couple of um, virtual assistants and I could share who my sources are, but I only pay them about 800 bucks a month. And they're working 40 hours a week, taking, taking on a lot of the, you know, that non-income producing activity. So, you know, um, but it's, it's, it's really about just kind of forecasting, in my opinion. It's, it's about looking at your business from a, from, from a bird's eye view every single month. I kind of anticipated the market to go down. I think this whole coronavirus thing was kind of the black swan that nobody ever knew was coming. Um, but because of those monthly practices, those annual practices of cutting down costs that wasn't working, we're kind of still coasting. Foreign contract last week, um, put, a, a, put an apartment building on the market yesterday, putting a new listing on the market today. And we're kind of just, you know, we're, we're seeing that buyers are still out there. You know, it's just really not stopping. Um, you know, and, and, but for my team, it's, it's just hunker down, you, you know, hunker down, continue talking to the people that's not going to waste your time, uh, continue staying in touch with the folks who you've already been in touch with. You know, um, I, I think one of the guys on the group said, uh, don't sell rather be informative. That's what, that's what we're doing as well. We kind of, 
We'll put an email blast to a lot of our clients that, hey, there's a stimulus package that should be, you know, coming out um, and, and just little things like that. So that's kind of how we're, uh, we're operating in today's market. Thanks for that. Awesome. I got to get on this uh, one o'clock call. I'd definitely love to stay on with you guys and sorry to be out early, but um, yeah, it was great connecting with you. And if you can please, uh, you said you're, you're recording it, Enrique, so if you could send it to me, that'd be, that'd be awesome, man. I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, I'll send it all. We're going to wrap up pretty soon. Just, I'll just uh, have a couple more questions and then we'll wrap up. I'll get you guys all the recording once we're done as well. Okay. If everybody can just smile, I'm going to do a quick pick. Jeez. Damn, Russ, you're a good looking, you're a good looking dude. You too, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, you guys too, Thanks man. Joe. Keep selling, man. Stay positive, you guys. Call me for anything. You guys are awesome. Thank you. You too. Yeah, later. Later. So, Rusty, we haven't heard from you, brother. Um, yeah, so. Make sure we get some input from you, bro. What's, what are your thoughts on all of this? Maybe any of the questions that we've talked about. Give me your, your two cents on all of it. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, you guys have all said a lot of things. I don't know that there's a lot more that I can add, but um, when it comes yeah. to trying to motivate a team and uh, try to keep people, you know, staying in the lane of doing business when, you know, it seems like the whole world's shutting down around us and we're at home with our families. And there's, you know, I've never been the type of person that really enjoys working from home. Cause I mean, I'm, I'm very easily distracted as a, as just as a human being. And, and uh, I find that, um, you know, I'd rather be doing dishes or laundry than doing my job sometimes. Right. And so, you know, I've got, I've got four people on my team on the, on the sales side that I have to keep motivated and I have also I have a salaried um, executive assistant and then I also have a salaried marketing person um, all of whom I'm trying to really keep busy at this moment and and I guess my biggest focus is I'm trying to figure out ways to keep things as normal as possible but at the same time you know shifting into this new world that we're going to be operating under for the next you know however many days and so what I've been trying to do is what do we normally do and then how do we do that virtually right so um, you know, I meet with my team, each of them once, once a week for half an hour to an hour, depending on how much time I have and they have in a given day. And, you know, we're utilizing obviously these Zoom contacts, we're usually utilizing FaceTime to have those meetings. And what I'm trying to do is teach them or, or show them ways where I could help them refocus what they would normally be doing, but doing it from home. So just a couple of examples is, um, you know, I'm really heavy on farming and my farming um, just re is really basic. I actually do door drops. I personally do about 8,000 homes. And as a team, we do about 12,000 homes and, and they're all door drops. And there's really nothing on those, on those door drop flyers other than what's going on in the market at that time. It's really pending and sold just on a really, really consistent basis. And I obviously can't be doing door drops this month and probably not next month. Right. So, so how do we get to those people and also keep it, you know, very much, um, the same as, as what we've been supplying them, which is just market information. So I've directed my whole team and, and I'm doing this myself as well as we're, we're getting the phone numbers of our farms and we're actually calling our farms. And since we've been doing this for, you know, a year in some cases or two years in others, um, they already know who we are. I mean, I swear on my farm, the, the people that live there, they think they've known me since I was in diapers. They act like they babysat me when I was a kid. Right. And and it's because I'm so consistent with my farming and I've had so many listings in the neighborhood. So when I call these people, they're not surprised that I'm calling them. Like they know who I am already. And um, I'm just telling them, hey, look, you know, normally on a monthly basis, you get a market update. You're not able to get that right now um, because we're, we're sheltering in place. But if you're interested, I'd, I'd be happy to kind of give you a, a snapshot of what's going on in the real estate market in Silicon Valley. You know, people are open to those conversations. So that's one thing that I'm doing is, is trying to share that practice with my team. And then similarly, I mean, those of us that have been in the business like myself for 19 years, I have a database of people that I can be calling. Um, and so I'm doing the same thing with them, whether it be on the phone or text messages. Um, and then finally, you know, what I'm thinking of doing is um, I, I normally send out a quarterly update to all of my past clients with a, 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 um, with a CMA on their home. I'm planning on sending one early, um, which is going to have a CMA on their home, but also have a letter on top of it that kind of explains, you know, how the market has been affected by COVID-19 so far and kind of what our predictions are for the future. Um, and so I've already written that and I have my market, marketing guy working on, on creating a, you know, a letter that looks nice and so that I can actually mail it to people. So um, that's what I'm doing to try to keep myself busy and also continue to generate leads is, is really trying to keep things as normal as possible but at the same time working within the constraints of the, of the shelter in place. That's awesome, bro. I appreciate that. 
Um, Ivan, we haven't heard from you, brother. Uh, give me maybe a touch on a, maybe one of these topics, anything that you feel you can chime in on or anything that was left out or maybe even any questions you have for the rest of the group. Um, so that was super helpful. I think the biggest thing that we've been doing, I think most of you guys have been doing, just starting the morning with intentions, gratitude, kind of getting the, the team on a, just a good spirit, getting, getting a good mindset going for the day. Uh, the, also the thing that we've been doing is just, so we track our numbers through follow up boss. It's our CRM. And so at the end of the day, we're actually taking a screenshot and sending it to the team and showing, Hey, who was productive, who worked today, who took the day off, which has been great accountability. Uh, so it's been good to see the team members making calls, but at the same time we pay for online leads. We pay for realtor.com and Zillow leads, but I've just noticed, uh, you know, really, while usually they're making 30 to 50 calls a day, now they're making maybe 10 to 20 calls a day. So I've been trying to motivate these guys, pushing them. Um, and that's where I've been struggling personally to get these guys up and running where, hey, life goes on, this will pass. And do you want to have business in the next 90, 60, or 30, 30 69 days? Because it will reflect. And so that's just been kind of the thing that I've been kind of struggling with my team. Otherwise, we're still pushing. We've got little going out. And I guess I keep making the calls because our biggest is not to show houses has been kind of their biggest um, the way, I guess. Yeah. Can you guys all hear me? My, I think my internet. Yeah. I think to, to chime in on that, um, Ivan, at least for us, from our perspective, Jason and I, is you got to just have those real conversations with the people on your team. You know, if they're not showing up and, and doing what they're supposed to be doing, I think you maybe need to paint the picture for them, uh, especially the newer guys. You know, a lot of us, we've been doing it already. We know what's, what needs to be done, but the newer guys, they need that reality check that, hey, what you do today is going to reflect in the next 90 days, 120 days, maybe even longer, depending on how, this, how long this thing pans out. So um, what I've done is, is we have our group meetings, but then I'm calling my guys one-on-one -on -one after that and just kind of hearing from them what their personal struggle. Cause a lot of times in our group session, they don't say everything, right? They kind of just go with the flow. But when you talk to them one-on-one -on -one, then you can kind of get really, you know, really to the bottom of it of what's really going on at home or, and things of that sort. So that's, that's kind of the advice that, you know, I would offer you is just have those real one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. of like, what do you want to happen? in the next, you know, 90 days for yourself. I love right. that. Um, Jason Palomino, um, so give us some perspective from the lending world and then anything you want to chime in on as well with what we talked about. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good stuff, guys. One thing, one thing I think that we've been doing is we've been actually role playing and recording the actual presentations so, so that the, the agents are comfortable with the Zoom presentation, whether they're going to be meeting with a buyer or, or a seller. So I think that's important to go ahead and make sure the agents are prepared. They have all the documents ready uh, so that when they do have that opportunity to meet with a client or have this appointment, the, it comes across really professional and, and it's uh, really informing. So that's something Enrique and I have done. And we also do some training on that. I'll go ahead and watch it and then we'll go ahead and sit with the or contact the agent and kind of go over it. Um, and I think that's, you know, it's been really helpful for the agents. They, they appreciate it because it's a rehearsal before the, the big, big show. Right. Um, so definitely if you guys, that, that's something I can definitely add to what, you know, what's going on here. So. Yeah. Uh, to, to touch base on that. Right. Cause I think we're, if this is going to be our new norm for the time being of doing these virtual meetings, that creates a whole nother obstacle of, are your agents fully trained on how to launch a Zoom meeting, how to send it out in the calendar, uh, how to navigate the share screen and all those things. So just doing that role play with them. Uh, we spent the last week and then even though they say, you know, they say, oh, yeah, I know how to do it. And then when you make them do it, they're fumbling, you know, they don't, they're just not prepared. Right. So uh, when I ran through it first and did my own own version before I go out to the team and kind of tell them this is how you launch the meeting and stuff like that. So I, I think that's important. Um, and Jason, I was, go was going to say, you always want to practice on each other and not practice on your clients, right? The, yeah. We just 
we're getting back to the same fundamentals. And, you know, when I talk about this being kind of the new norm, um, we're going to see clients who might prefer this method of engagement in the future because they're going to realize how much time it saves, how much more efficient you can get with the words that you use. Um, so these are just, uh, in my opinion, it is catapulting everybody to adopt the technologies that they probably should have adopted over the last five years. So um, for, for me, I'm looking at all of these exercises of big wins for um, our industry and society moving forward, to be honest. Um, if you look at the people who are being very effective already with dealing with these uh, scenarios and, and really building community and, and crowdsourcing, they're doing it through social media. Um, how many people in your office have already started groups that are micro um, focused on their local farms asking how they can help and connecting the neighbors? So people, it, it's just a fact that people spend and more time on Facebook than they do um, in next door. So just, you know, extend those communities and build some groups on uh, Facebook that you know people are trying to connect on other sources. Um, we just, in my personal opinion, I believe people are looking for leadership to add some standards and um, some normalcy to their own business. So keeping people on a schedule, keeping them accountable as you would at any other period of time is imperative. They're, they're looking for that. For from all of us. And um, as rainmakers, you still have to make sure that you understand that that's your responsibility um, to the team as well. So it's important that you continue to make your calls and that you continue to try and uh, drive up uh, those lead sources uh, for the rest of the team. Awesome, great advice, great advice. I think guys, I think I don't wanna to take too much of your time up. This is a solid hour. There's a lot of good nuggets in here. I'll get this all uh, downloaded, get you guys the recording. Um, Kevin, since you just came back, bro, bless us with some inspiring words to end this meeting, brother. <laughs> Man, I would just say, it's funny. I, I, I heard Tom Ferry say it, and I thought that was pretty good. I don't really follow Tom, but I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. And he just said, we got to remember right now more than ever to take our meds. <laughs> and our meds are meditation, which I would switch for prayer, exercise, diet, and sleep. You know, there it's our business is already difficult as it is. And now we're just flooded with an abundance of fear and worry and doubt and the unknown. You know, ignorance creates fear and knowledge creates confidence. And right now there's a fair amount of unknown. So I think this is more important than ever that we get right with ourselves and, and to also trust that this is all good. Like we're going through a season where people are learning to have more compassion for one another. I drive down my block and I saw yesterday three different groups of neighbors out on their lawns, staying like 20 feet apart, but three different groups of neighbors out on their lawns talking to each other. Like this is like the fifties you know, where people are checking in with each other. And so if this is what had to happen for us to, you know, the amount of money that I spend on Nikes that I can't wear right now, I'm just like, <laughs> I buy so much stupid shit that I'm realizing I don't need this stuff, man. And so I just, I'm actually very thankful for this time. And so I just think it's really important right now that we, we remember to take our meds, we remember to meditate and pray. I'm exercising like crazy two times a day right now. Thank God, uh, right before all this happened, I went on a no sugar diet. So I'm like day 23 of no sugar because if it wasn't for that, I would be all up in the pantry eating Reese's and who knows what else is in there. So uh, meditation and prayer, exercise, diet, get in the proper sleep. And just really spending time right now to sharpen our acts. We're not going to generate business like we were before. Um, and it's all good. It will pick back up. And when things come back, we're going to be sharper and stronger and more focused and closer relationships with our family. So um, let's just make the most of our time, guys, and really be leaders for people and encouragers. But in order to do that, we got to make sure that we're right with ourselves first. So... Let's continue leading by example and, and pouring out that positivity on social media right now because people need to hear it. There's enough negativity. Let's do our best to really pour out the positivity.
And I'll share the last thing. The best thing I saw, a friend of mine owns a, owns a clothing company called Fear of God. And uh, he put a post out and it said, the biggest loss in all of this, he said, the biggest loss in all of this is if we come out on the other side unchanged. Let me make sure that's exactly what it is before I, I mess up this guy's quote. He said, the biggest loss in the end is if we come out on the other side of this unchanged. I thought that was really good. So let's use it as a time for change, guys. Right on. Awesome, man. Right on. Amen to that. I appreciate all your guys' time. This was awesome, inspirational, a lot of nuggets here. Um, do me a favor. Can you guys go into the chat? Hit the chat button.